so what are we going to talk about my lovely lovely imps we are going to talk about being a good little christian okay because you little muffins gotta know there's a whole dang pile of freaking fracking fragging flumpin bumpin dumpin new rules on youtube now actually the rules aren't all that new however youtube has begun to crack down very very hard on profanity which is lame and really really sucks and uh Often on this channel, I talk about the sort of downstream effects of the overwhelming Christianity of American culture and how it sort of finds its way into uh, f freaking everything. These Christian muffin flippers find their way into every single corner of culture. And even when things aren't explicitly Christian, you will often notice that they are based off of Christian values. They are based off of off, off of Christian fundamentalist values, even worse. And there's a number of reasons for that, which we're going to get into um, uh, on this stream. Real quick, if you look over on, on the side of the stream here, can you all type some common swear words? Can you all like, you know, like heck and all those sorts of things? Uh, there if you guys could if you if you little heckers in chat could flip and find some notice how there's a bunch of stars there notice how there's just a, a ton of stars well that's because the muffins over at YouTube have already made it such that uh, swears that appear in text on your screen uh, will often demonetize your video and can sometimes even age restrict, restrict your video. And uh, as it turns out, this has gotten a lot, lot harsher uh, in recently. So some of you will already have already noticed if you watch my videos on my channel, if you watch my edited videos, we already try to bleep out most of the swears. We try to bleep out the swears and the real bad words, uh, you know, words like, um, like with like another word for a woman's cookie um you know or or you know like those types of words we try to bleep those out and that's because if we don't do that we don't get any money from youtube which is kind of absurd to think about right why is that why is it that if you say if you say a flippin swear word then you end up losing money on youtube well the answer is that YouTube monetization, the money that you get for YouTube is uh, essentially almost all produced from advertisements. Now, for me, I'm very lucky because I have a Patreon, which you can subscribe to if you want to support my show, if you think my show's funny, if you're having a good time, you can support me on Patreon. Um, God, God bless you. God bless you. Um, and also, I have a website, which that's where this chat is right here. And the website allows people to subscribe directly to me and get a whole bunch of bonuses, which you should do because it's really cheap to subscribe to my website. And also, you get a bunch of cool stuff like a fancy name and all kinds of other things. And that lets me sustain my channel. I've talked about this many times about how despite that I've... Hold on, let me real quick. Let me just bring up the statistics for you. Um, I'm going to read off a little bit of YouTube statistics about my channel, okay? Real quick. Let's look at the all-time, shall we? Lifetime. All right, listen up, folks, okay? My channel, Demon Mama, the channel you are loving and adoring and having a great time with right now, like, subscribe, etc. Um, this blessed, godly, pure channel has received 2,705,000 256 views through the life of this channel. 2.7 million views, okay? People have watched my channel for 1.2 million hours cumulatively. I'm, I'm not kidding you. You, my lovely imps, cumulatively have watched 1.2 million hours of the Demon Mama show. That is un- 
believable. That is so amazing. And I want you to understand that in the entire uh, almost three year history of my show at this point, it's almost been three years, um, I have made less than $20,000 from my YouTube channel. I'm not kidding you. Three years, 1.2 million watch hours, and I've made less than $20,000. And I want you to understand that that money includes people who subscribe directly to my YouTube and pay money. That includes Super Chats. If we were to just look at, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, as Carbonated Peach Milk says, people have watched my show for 136.9 years, cumulatively. That is incredible, okay? I'm very proud of that. But I have made from my channel less than $20,000 and that is that is including the super chats that is including the people who actually pay directly etc okay so even though all of us are making an incredible amount of money for YouTube even though YouTube is raking in billions of dollars every year the actual people who make the content uh, don't actually make all that much off of YouTube. We usually have to monetize external to YouTube. That's just how it is. And part of the reason for that, um, part of the reason is because of advertisers. All of this has been uh, trying to explain to you why is it that people on YouTube can make, have to go through so much effort to censor their videos and then still don't make any money. And the answer is because of advertisers. You see, advertisers don't like it when things that, that might be distasteful to some of their, um, to some of their viewers, to some of their purchasers, they don't want their brand names associated with anything that might be mildly problematic. And if everything is based around advertisers, then what you end up with is a culture that is highly sanitized. You end up with a culture that is highly choked. Many, many topics will never be talked about simply because advertisers don't like it. Many, many words will be will not be used simply because advertisers won't like them. Sometimes, as we saw a couple of years ago, with LGBT content being uh, functionally blacklisted by the YouTube algorithm because of advertisers, you will have raw discrimination um, uh, occur as a result of this dynamic, as a result of this advertiser dynamic. And this just keeps getting harsher and harsher. You see, advertisers and also payment processors, aka PayPal, Visa, uh, etc., these two groups are the groups that have the most control over online content. And I mean that. You cannot make a living if you do certain types of content. For example, good luck making a channel, uh, having a channel that makes money on YouTube if you're doing sex ed. Well, shouldn't sex ed content be able to exist on YouTube? It's not explicitly sexually explicit. It's not designed for titillation. It's not, uh, and even if it was, we can get into that in a minute. Um, and also there are tons and tons of adults on YouTube who might be interested in learning more about their bodies or about the way that they can have a healthier and safer sex life. But no, you see, because advertisers are ultimately the ones with the chokehold on, on the money that flows into YouTube and ultimately therefore the ones that have a chokehold on the money that goes to content creators, um, we're not allowed to have certain things. We're not allowed to have sustainable uh, projects that are about certain subjects. We're not allowed to say certain words. We're not allowed to uh, explore certain ideas. Um, and all of this ties back to what I was talking about at the beginning, which is that even though YouTube is not a Christian company, weirdly enough, Christian values have found their way into the community guidelines. For some reason, swearing is now being cracked down on by YouTube, which means that uh, not only will your videos get 
uh, demonetized for having too many swears or having the wrong type of swears or having swears too early in the videos. We can go and look at the actual guidelines if you want to. Um, let me tell you, let me just give you a sampling of them. You're not allowed to say the F word in the first 15 seconds of a video. In fact, it's recommended that you shouldn't say the F word in the first 60 seconds of a video. But we're now finding out that videos that have the F word in them at all are sometimes getting demonetized, even though the rule is technically that you shouldn't have it in the first 15 seconds and that maybe you should think about not having it in the first 60 seconds. How is, first of all, how is anyone supposed to react to that? How are you supposed to build around rules that say, don't say the F word in the first 15 seconds and maybe you shouldn't say it in the first 60 seconds because we might not like it if you say it in the first 60 seconds either, but actually also sometimes we're just going to randomly demonetize your video for saying it at all in a video, even if it's your style, even if it's mostly adults or, uh, uh, you know, even if it's mostly adults that watch your content which it is. For me, my content is mostly watched by adults. Well, now this video is going to be de demonetized because look at the chat. Um, you guys found one of the words that's not cleared. Um, so <laughs> I don't even remember where I was. Now I've lost my train of thought because I saw all the swears in my own chat. Um, YouTube is increasingly making it harder and harder to be anything but a family-friendly channel. And when I say family-friendly, keep in mind that's the, 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 the idea of family-friendly is not a like neutral concept. The concept of family-friendliness comes from Christian values. What is family-friendly is what Christians would approve. You know, Veggie Tales, uh, certain cartoons, but as we know, Christians usually tend to take it up a further notch. They don't just dislike swearing. They don't just dislike sexual content. They dislike uh, uh, LGBT content. They dislike anything that challenges uh, patriarchy. They dislike anything that challenges conservative values. And all of these get bundled into something that is called family friendly. Um, we could go, I, I mean, I could go and talk about um, things like the Hayes Code. Uh, the Hayes Code uh, being a, uh, a pseudo censorship, uh, uh, agreement that, that many, many media companies agreed to participate in, in order to be able to get their movies shown in movie theaters, in order to get their movies shown on TV, in order to get their TV shows, their radio shows, et cetera, et cetera. The Hayes Code, I mean, we can go through the Hayes Code. Uh, uh, let me just read some things from it. Here, I'll just bring it up. We'll just look at this. Let's take a look at the motion picture code. This is a set of industry guidelines for self-censorship. Now, of course, this isn't technically legal. There were aspects of this that got uh, involved in, in you know, law, but this was a industry guidelines. Even though this isn't a law, even though it's not technically Christian, I want you to see um, some of the things on here. Let's take a look at this. One, pointed profanity, either title or lip. This includes the word God, Lord, Jesus Christ, unless they are used reverently in connection with proper religious ceremonies. Hell, son of a bitch, damn, God, and every other profane and vulgar expression, however it may be spelled. Number one, the first one. Notice that. But let's keep going. Any licentious activity or suggestive nudity, in fact or in silhouette, any lecherous or licentious notice by other characters in the picture, the illegal traffic of drugs, any inference of sexual perversion. You want to know what sexual perversion means? That means being gay. That means anything that's not a uh, missionary heterosexual. Uh, white slavery, miscegenation. That's right. In the original Hayes Code, it was, it was, you would, you could not get a movie made that depicted interracial marriage, sex hygiene and venereal diseases, no showing people cleaning their own body and no depiction of venereal diseases, scenes of actual childbirth, in fact or in silhouette, children's sex organs, ri ridicule of the clergy. That's an interesting one, huh? That's an interesting one. Willful offense to any nation, race, or creed. 
Here are special care. So these are suggestions. You won't necessarily get your movie taken down for these ones. The use of the flag, international relations, arson, use of firearms, theft, robbery, safe cracking, dynamiting of trains, so criminals. Brutality, gruesomeness, technique of committing ver murder. So you're not supposed to depict how people could kill somebody. Methods of smuggling, third degree methods, hangings or electrocutions as legal punishment for crime. Sympathy for criminals. Y you are suggested to not depict sympathy for criminals. Attitude toward public characters and institutions. Don't disrespect the state. Sedition. Don't disrespect the state. Apparent cruelty to children and animals, branding of people or animals, the sale of women, or of a woman selling her vir virtue, no depicting per uh, prostitutes, don't depict rape or attempted rape, don't depict first night scenes, aka se sex after marriage, uh, uh, man and woman in bed together, deliberate seduction of girls, the institution of marriage, surgical operations, the use of drugs, titles or scenes having to do with law enforcement or uh, law enforcement officers, heavy or lustful kissing. Now, again, most of this was not legal. There were no laws saying you couldn't do this, but in the name of promoting good business, in the name of making lots of money, it was uh, understood that this guideline would ensure that you don't offend anybody, but that you especially don't offend Christians and that you especially don't offend a the state, which is backed by Christians. So you're starting to hopefully understand where I'm going, where, what I'm getting at with this. YouTubers are increasingly having their ability to express themselves restricted. And all of this is in the name of appeasing advertisers, advertisers who, who desire no risk. But the problem is, is that uh, that limiting expression in th to this degree does have a very real effect on artistic expression, on entertainment, on the authenticity of anything that you're watching. Would you guys like it if for the rest of my streaming career, I only was able to say things like muffin and butts and dang and dag nabbit? Would you guys really like that? Because I hate it. It makes me feel crazy to have to pretend like I'm uh, making all of my content for a, a kindergarten class at a Christian school. Sophie says, Thank you very much for the tier one sub. I recall that you weren't even allowed to say the word pregnant or pregnancy or show a woman being pregnant until the early 60s. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> it sucks. I mean, it stinks. Sorry, guys. It stinks. It stinks to high heaven. L heavens to Betsy. It makes me so fragging frustrated. Okay. Um, it is so bad. And I'm not, by the way, I'm not the only one talking about this. Uh, there is a, a enormous outcry from YouTubers about this problem, but keep in mind, nothing's going to change. The, the YouTubers alone don't have the ability to overcome the primary funding method for YouTube. It just, it's just... That's where our culture is going. Our culture is becoming increasingly intolerant to any deviancy, to any deviancy, meaning swearing, act, being openly gay, looking sexual, whatever that means, looking, uh, uh, talking about serious issues. No, instead, all of our culture is getting increasingly sanitized so that you can only ever talk about smiling flowers dancing from side to side as if we're all living in a Disney film. Do they demonetize bleeps? Yes, they do not like bleeps. Uh, they just don't want you to swear. Now, keep in mind that YouTubers have been trying to get around the swearing problem for a long time. Hence why every video that you watch has these weird sound effects that cover up swears. 
And that's partially because YouTube would de-boost videos that have a bunch of beeps in them. So now not only can you not beep them, you have to do weird, cre either you have to come up with weird creative ways to hide your swear words, or you have to just not swear at all. So there's, and interestingly, I will, I want you to pay attention. The, the usual free speech warriors are dead silent when it comes to this. You don't hear all the conservatives who are whining about free speech talk about this. I wonder why. Do you think maybe it could be because such things align with their worldview, align with their Christian influenced worldview? On my stream, I talk about very frequently the fact that even secular conservatives are functionally Christian. They believe in fundamentalist Christian interpretations of the world. They have fundamentalist Christian values. They uphold a fundamentalist uh, Christian worldview. And we see this now all the time. We see this constantly. Many, um, I mean, some of them have even converted. Like y'all remember uh, Dave Rubin? Remember how Dave Rubin used to be a atheist centrist gay guy? And now he's just a... Uh, He's just a Christian gay guy now. Isn't it basically a chicken and egg thing? No, uh, it's not a chicken and egg thing because the Christian beliefs ha well, well predate the American conservative movement. The Christian beliefs have been around since zero BC. Now you can enjoy a Christian stream. Oh, you silly little muffin. Get your dang butt in here and sit on down because we got to go through a whole bunch of this uh, 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 cow cradge. Yeah, it sucks. It really sucks. Um, oh God, I can't say sucks because that is a reference. That's a sexual reference, guys. Um, by the way, I just want to, I'm going to jump here and I'm going to, I'm going to step away from YouTube and I'm going to talk about how this connects to our broader culture. Uh, I kind of did already with the Christian thing, but I, I hope you understand that this is a very good indicator of the direction of our culture. Our culture is becoming increasingly paranoid and hostile about anything that could be considered distasteful. And notice that what is considered distasteful always has a certain political bent to it. What is distasteful is gay people, uh, which is framed as perversion. What is distasteful is anybody who dresses differently. If you, if you dress in a way that Christians think is offensive, if you wear, uh, you know, if you wear goth clothing, if you wear something that's a little more revealing, if you wear something that doesn't cover your ankles, these are all things that Christians find distasteful and perverted. And they will say, if you try to defend yourself, if you try to say, hey, just because I have a lower cut shirt doesn't mean that I'm doing something sexual, they will say, wow, you support, the you want to show children your tits? You want to show children your tits? What's wrong with you? Are you a pedophile? Goth clothing? Oh, don't you mean BDSM groomer harnesses? Yes, that is literally what I'm talking about. It is the through line to the... Uh, to the vibes-based freakouts. The fact that people are like, oh my God, that bear wearing a spiked necklace, it's wearing a BDSM collar. That is the exact type of moral panic, Christian weirdness that is leaking into every aspect of our society. And the whole world ends up suffering because y YouTube is a United States, con uh, uh, United States company. YouTube is is based in the United States and everybody has to watch YouTube videos. So if YouTube decides to keep implementing these hyper-Christian weird policies, then everyone in the world has to suffer. Even if your country doesn't have as weird of approach towards t conversations about sex, depictions of violence, swearing, and keep in mind that it's not just the swearing. YouTube is, getting, is cracking down on talking about uh, uh, talking about alcohol and weed. So if you, t even if your show is, my show is not marked for children, okay? YouTube has a whole stupid opt-in program to opt in whether your show is for children or not. And that was supposed to alleviate this problem, but it hasn't because the Christian culture war marches on. So even though my show is not for kids, it's not marked for kids, 
talking about sex, talking about uh, weed, talking about alcohol, all of these things risk damaging my channel. And channels are starting to get um, age restricted. And by the way, if your video gets age restricted, it's a death knell. If your channel gets age restricted, you're done. You won't get you won't you won't show up in searches. You get deboosted by the algorithm. And it's just getting more and more aggressive. This policy keeps marching further and further until eventually uh, it will until what? Are we going to have a situation where having a gay person on stream on on your screen is considered, uh, you know, sexual perversion again? Because I know there's a lot of people who are pushing for that. The 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 biggest conservative channels on YouTube are unironically pushing for that. They believe that a trans person or a gay person existing in the presence of a child is an act of grooming. They believe that simply discussing the existence of trans people or gay people is an act of child of, of sex abuse. That's insane. And yet this is where we are. Is it a stretch to say that this has a tie to the act of attempted queer genocide? No, that is not a stretch at all. One of the things, we have a video coming out. Uh, oh, I don't want to spoil too much. I have a video in the works that is going to directly discuss the building of a queer genocide and how these are directly inspired by Christian norms. That the norm, the Christian norm, they try to secularize it. Even though Christians generally oppose that, what Christians love to do is they love to write a law that espouses Christian values, but is stated as though it's simply a law. As, oh, oh, did you know that, for example, Germany had a law outlawing homosexuality and making it a crime, an imprisonable crime to be gay, to be gay in public, to be found out as gay could put you in prison in Germany. And that law, uh, the, the, the attempt to get rid of that law, that law, which, which was stated in secular terms, it, it used terms of, well, this is, it's not about, they didn't call it a Christian law. They weren't talking about nowhere in the law does it reference offending God, but it, it imbued the Christian values into legal language. And it, that law was originally created by a Christian empire. These are all little steps on a path saying uh, 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 saying that, oh, uh, uh, deviancy is bad, saying that swearing is an unequivocal bad, saying that depictions or discussions of sex are unequivocally bad, saying that depictions or discussions around drugs or alcohol are unequivocally bad or dangerous. This is a bad precedent. This is the real threat to free speech, the actual threat to, th to free speech being a culture which makes it impossible for you to talk about serious issues because one religion has you by the throat, because one religion said that what is family friend friendly must be the most a uh, watered down, simplistic, fake, uh, untruth that you can possibly imagine. It's really unfortunate. And obviously, this segment started being about YouTube being about how annoying it's becoming to be able to make content that is uh, about anything other than the most vapid topics on YouTube. How so much as saying fuck in your video can get your video demonetized. How uh, talking about certain topics is becoming increasingly more difficult. How in the past it's already been like this. Like I said, some of you will remember five, six years ago when YouTube had off the book off the book algorithm deboosting for any content that ended up being tagged as LGBT. There were invisible tags in the algorithm that if your content got tagged as LGBT, it would deboost your video because that was not family friendly. That you could lose, your videos could be demonetized and deemed un, uh, unsatisfactory for advertisers because advertisers d had selected LGBT topics as adult topics. Even though there are gay 
and trans young people. Being gay and trans and talking about gay and trans issues are not an inherently uh, like dangerous or harmful topic to talk about with young people. You were actively demonetized if you had gay, or lesbian, or trans in your title or description like six years ago. Yup. We've already had one adpocalypse. We've already had arguably two adpocalypses. But what we are witnessing now is a slow and steady choking of expression on YouTube. And like I said, like I've said through this entire thing, I'll say it again. It's interesting that it is always slanted in one direction. That it is slanted in the direction of anybody who doesn't look like the norm. The white Christian male, uh, not swearing, no tattoos, not gay, uh, the white straight Christian male standard. Anything out of that is deviant. Anything out of that is unnatural. And from there, it spirals out and it leaks its way into all of these things that we deal with. And also, it makes your content worse. It makes your life worse because you don't get to see the truth. Instead, you have to have a bunch of people self-censoring all the time, giving you false depictions because if they don't, they can't make a living as an artist. So people have to choose to either find a way to be financially independent this is why this is you should take this opportunity to go subscribe on my website demonmama.com forward slash subscribe or demonmama.com forward slash donate or you should join my patreon patreon.com forward slash demonmama so that i can continue to pro provide you with real actual entertainment i can say swears i can say <laughs> i can say shit i can say that's <laughs> bullshit when somebody tells you a lie to your face so that I can talk about uh, important LGBT topics so that I can talk about serious issues so that I can talk about the horrible shit that right-wingers do uh, around the world that is too violent to be talked about. We can talk, we can make jokes about having sex with Jesus. You can actually enjoy the actual ability to have free speech instead of some uh, cucked, watered down nonsense so <laughs> there's the that's one option is to do what i do which is that i have a third party you know uh, i have a, a way for you to pay me that is not uh through twitch that is not through youtube it is my own website which you can support me on it's my own patreon which you can support me on uh so that i don't have to rely on ad revenue um because i can't uh, making twenty thousand dollars less than twenty, le literally, significantly less than twenty thousand dollars over the course of three years of constantly making YouTube content of nearly daily uploads, um, uh, 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 that is not viable for me or for anyone at all. Um, and then there's other options, which is you totally water down your content. You, you do the thing that I do, which is like, that I joke about, which is like, oh, oh, you silly little muffins, you silly little geese. Okay, everybody, next we're going to talk about something fun. The new Disney movie, the new Marvel movie. Yay, yay, in Jesus' name, blessings to all of you, yay. If you want that, there's that option. And then there's three, which is that you just, artists just stop making stuff. If you're not like me, where you have an independent uh, uh, you know, source. If you're not like the people who clean up their content to make it perfectly family friendly at all times so that you're only ever talking about marshmallows and blankets and plushies and only the goody, goody, good feelings in the world and you never say any dang old swear words and you never say poop or, or dumpy or anything like that uh, and you're not one of those, your third option is to ditch, to just say, I'm done. And like I said, it, 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 it is, uh, it's wild, the direction which this pushes culture. And I don't know what the answer is because, um, <laughs> you guys, we've talked about this. We've talked about how everybody always says, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but everybody always says my channel should be bigger. My channel should be bigger. We've been battling a uphill battle for searchability. Not only have I had m a multiple communities actively trying to smear my name and discourage people from following me, 
Um, but I've, but I also know that I talk about things that get our videos demonetized. Most of my videos get demonetized. Now that we're doing swear censoring, uh, I've been able to get some of my videos monetized, but now that they've made the changes to the policy, or rather I should say that they're cracking down on the policy, I don't know if my videos are going to be monetized anymore. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make any money from YouTube anymore. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get my videos into the algorithm. And that is especially true if this channel gets age gated. If they decide decide to start age gating my videos, there's no there's no growth on YouTube anymore, which hurts a lot, especially because we finally started gaining some growth on YouTube. And and this is not just on YouTube. Uh, like I've said this entire time, I've got this whole video. I've been trying to tie this to broader things. It's not just YouTube. Every site is cracking down. You guys remember what happened to Tumblr? You remember when when the the Tumblr apocalypse happened when they banned all sexual uh, uh, content on the site to the point that you can't even post nudes, non-sexual nudes. You can't even post non-sexual nudes anymore on, on Tumblr. And it destroyed an enormous amount of culture on the site. And other sites are doing this too. They deleted my entire blog? Yeah. Nudes are back though, but you have to turn them on. Yeah, well, it's ta only tasteful nudes. Notice that. They're bringing back non-sexual nudity. Wow, what a pr what progress for five years, all sexual content. So, and here's the second part of this whole thing. I know this is a bit disorganized at this point because it's so goddamn frustrating. But the second part is why should sexual content have to be banned from every single website on the planet? Sexual content is not bad. Sexual content is a thing that literally the majority of the world enjoys. It is only Christians who believe that all sexual content is in inherently evil. It is only Christians who believe that like, uh, that like having adults have access to sexual content is a bad thing. It's never about actually protecting children because uh, they'll say it is. But it never actually is because most of these sites have things in the way of children getting access to that content anyway. They want the content to not exist. They want all content that is even vaguely sexual to be pounded into a corner. And what is the only worldview that then remains? Highly sanitized, non-sexual, and explicitly Christian. That's it. And by the way, Christians and their advocates are constantly pushing for their worldview. They've managed to get, over the course of many years, they've managed to push abstinence-only education. They've managed to push huge anti-abortion changes. We just lost the right to abortion in the United States. And it's this, it's all this goal of, of suppressing deviancy. And again, I just call you back to the Hayes Code. The Hayes Code, by the way, Take a look at what year the Hayes Code was finally overturned. Take a look at that. Can you guys see that right there? 1968. 1968 was when the Hayes Code was finally, finally done for. And by the way, just because the Hayes Code is gone doesn't mean that a lot of that still stuck around. Because keep in mind that the 80s, there was a massive backlash and a huge censorship push on music. It has lasting cultural ramifications and I, and I wish I knew what to tell you to do about it but the only thing I can even that I can even say the only thing that I can even tell you to do is to push back against this hyper Christian morality these moral panics uh, to push back against the ever encroaching hyper capitalism of our current age the world that says that the only the only people who should have a say in anything are the people with money that advertisers should get to decide everything because they simply have a fuckload of cash um the type of people who are constantly trying to tell you that everything that they think is icky is intrinsically bad I don't even, I don't even know. 
What do we even do against moral panics? Well, you have to publicly push back against them. People have to. So let me talk about another tangentially related topic. You guys remember, uh, you remember the rise of atheism? Remember that? There was a huge, huge rise in atheism in the, uh, in the early to mid 2000s. You know, the like lay Reddit atheism kind of thing. The early to mid 2000s had this huge rise in atheism unlike the likes of which had not really been seen in the United States ever before. And it's kind of wild, if you think about it, that it took until the early 2000s for there to be a significant atheist movement in the United States that had any sort of prevalence. So for all the years prior to that, Christians still dominated the culture. And guess what? They still do. Some people took the rise of atheism and the like memification of atheism to mean that like, wow, American culture is finally changing, but it didn't. It just meant that some people started to change. And I'll note though, I'll note those people making a stink, those people pushing back against Christianity, making a real fight against Christianity started to change things, not even close to enough but it started to change things. And what that shows is that if we do take a public stand against moral panics, that some change can happen. We can make things at least a little bit better. We can begin to give people an alternative narrative than the uh, hyper-Christian or wink-wink, nudge-nudge Christian narrative. But right now, our culture is in the midst of a hyper-Christian seizure. Uh, there is uh, these huge right-wing movements that are attempting to bring young people, uh, to bludgeon young people into Christianity, that are trying to bludgeon young people into the same nightmarish, horrific, dark age that, the, that history has been, that has been like hovering over history for ever since Christianity grew on the world stage. What are some ways that we can individually push back specifically? Well, one way is to support content creators that are pushing the envelope. Make sure that you support them even if it sometimes becomes inconvenient. If somebody who is doing good queer content gets destroyed by YouTube, help spread the word so they can get their channel back. Help supporting them on other sites if you have the ability to do so. But what's easy for everyone is that you can actually push back in public. If you hear people pushing these ideas, learn to argue against them. Learn to push back against the idea that everything that Christians don't like is somehow bad. That the idea that gay people are intrinsically uh, d deviant or that, uh, that gay people are intrinsically perverted. Push back against these things hard and don't tolerate people trying to start moral panics. Fight moral panics. Fight them with your all. Cling to the truth and call, force people to, uh, if you can, when you can, call people to actually stand by the truth. I found this from the 12th International Conference on Emerging Ubiquitous Systems and Pervasive Networks, YouTube Monetization and Censorship by Proxy. Oh, this is interesting. As consumption of digital content has climbed, so has the censorship of content. The censorship has only increased with companies more sensitive to the type of content that they tie their advertising to on digital platforms. Demonetization of videos is a primary way that content is cens censored on YouTube. Demonetization, often referred to as an adpocalypse, is a, is a process in which content creators are denied or paid are denied pay ads in their YouTube videos. Consequently, they are denied revenue. Their income on the video hosting platform is reduced and their video is less likely to be promoted or recommended, eventually getting totally censored. YouTube's censorship algorithm is not public and it's a black box to the world. The paper proposes a methodology that employ four machine learners um, to predict if changes in the metadata of YouTube video will lead to demonetization and censorship of the video. Our methodology requires little time to train in an ac and achieve an accuracy of up to 87%. The methodology is useful to content creators trying to determine what content to create to maximize their revenue. Actually, that's super interesting. I should read this whole document. I want to see what their findings were in the end. Oh, this is pretty, this is, oh, this is from this year. They're using Mr. Beast as an example. Look at this. This paper has, a, has Mr. Beast as an example. Advertisement of Mr. Beast on a monetized video. 
That's super interesting. Am I a Christian now? No, but I, I pretended to be for a few minutes for a bit. That paper is pretty comprehensive and it's a good read. It's actually wild the degree to which we have to dance around the algorithm in order to avoid having our stuff censored for things that are only offensive to Christians, to things that are only offensive to advertisers who are appealing to a lowest common denominator. And it's interesting too, if you think about it, why do you think that, uh, that advertisers are beholden to Christians? Do you think it's because every advertising company is secretly run by a Christian? Well, okay, some of them are actually. Uh, there are a lot of Christians with a lot of money in positions of power in America, but that's not the actual reason. The real reason is because Christians are the biggest, whiniest, bitch baby snowflakes on the entire goddamn planet, and they kick a absolute shit fit every time anything so much as slightly offends them. Christians as a whole absolutely lose their mind over anything. And if you don't believe me, if you're like somebody who grew up in the era of lay Reddit atheism, you should just go take a look at the types of uh, petitions that Christians whip up, at the amount of people who will jump on board Christian protests. Christians are remarkably litigious. Christians are remarkably active in, in politics. They will freak out and throw a protest. You, you want to look at wild stuff? You should go look at how many Christian groups had protests when Ellen DeGeneres was in an ad for JCPenney. You should. I think it was JCPenney. Maybe it was Macy's. Uh, whatever. Either one. You should go take a look at how many millions of Christians freaked out and actively protested and threatened companies over that. And by the way, I fully recognize that there are a lot of Christians out there who aren't super intolerable. This is not me saying that all Christians are bad or that all of Christianity is bad, but American evangelical Christianity is a dangerous meme and it is rapidly transforming into Christian nationalism that is leaking into every aspect of our lives. It is sanitizing and sterilizing our culture. It is sanitizing and sterilizing music, movies, games. So. If you notice that the videos that I put out are um, uh, have to have no swears in them or that the videos I put out are all on really fluffy issues, well, you should tune into the stream because the stream is where I'm always going to be as unfiltered and uncensored as possible. But unfortunately, if we want to make a living, we just can't post controversial content on YouTube at the moment because we can't risk getting our channel destroyed this early on.